That no, actually happened to you? It did. I thought I've talked about this. I We've never talked about this. If you're not resilient, if you can't get through all these issues with a positive outlook, you always tell me that I'm the most positive person you know. You, I don't know you sure. are. <laughs> you are. When you marry the real world with the digital world, like conversion skyrockets. Our billboards, our mobile billboards, allows these new up-and-coming law firms to penetrate the market where other areas... You know, where other billboards are not. I hope they assume yeah, but, <laughs> that uh, that law firm is not be, inside the truck. Even if you're ranking, if you're not getting phone calls, mm-hmm. if you're not signing up cases, you're not going to care about the rankings. It's, it's, it's a holistic approach. So I've been doing marketing. Experiential was the first thing I did. Then I worked for corporate brands in America. <laughs> I started buying billboards. I saw there was a problem. I wait, could wait, offer wait, a solution. You were buying billboards where? Predominantly in Southern California. So the six busiest freeways of the country, six of the top 10 are in Los Angeles. So those billboards are very expensive. The 405, the 101, the five freeways. And I was working for different brands and I was always buying billboards. And then I saw that there's a lot of big semi trucks, just white, you know, unbranded trucks that I could possibly add space to that, you know, rent space. What do you mean by that? I mean, I could put a brand on a logo on a truck. So the, what really struck my mind was I was looking out, I was following a truck for, for a beer brand and I followed them to the store and then they were unloading cases of beer for a different brand. And oh, I was wow. like, and I was like, oh, wow. I was like, why are you guys like advertising one brand, but really doing for the competitor? Did you ask them that? I did. The guys and they're like, oh no, the brand pays to put the advertise or their, their brand on the truck. It doesn't necessarily mean that that's a product inside. And that's really how this whole idea was born. That the consumer naturally assumes that what's on the outside of the truck is really the product that's inside. And so originally, that's how I started. I was like, oh, I bet I can do that. And I was working for Essential Water. And I was like, I bet it's a, it's a new brand. People want to know about it. So I was like, if I put a lot of trucks with Essential branding, people are going to think that we're selling cases and cases all over. So did you pitch the idea? <laughs> I did. I was shut down horribly. <laughs> she, so I had just gotten the job. It was a new job. It was literally in my first week. Know and it all. It, I wasn't a know it all, but I knew enough of the market that I could save money. And I was sitting with a, you know, with a VP of marketing at the time, and I just said, "Hey, you know, I think we could really save money if we instead of investing on on billboards in Santa Monica or downtown LA, we could do these trucks. It'll be a lot cheaper, and people will actually see it." And it's not going to look like we're trying to advertise to them. Like people are just going to think that, that the, the product is inside. inside. And, and she said, oh, like first week on the job and you're already trying to change things. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I just she kept my mouth to, shut. She told you to stay in your lane? Not like that. I really respect this woman. She held a global marketing role for Microsoft. Like she knows exactly the marketing world. I really respect her. So, so when she said this, I was like, okay, you know, I'm here to learn. It was my first week on the job, so I was just there to learn. Um, but the idea sort of stayed in my mind, and about two years late into the job, I, I decided to do it as a part-time. So I started doing it on my own while I was still working for Essential Water. Now on Instagram, your bio says that you took your business from $7 to seven figures. You What's, like that one, huh? I it's like good. it a lot. It's catchy. It's good. What's, is it true, though? It's, <laughs> yes, it's true. What, tell us the story. I started the, the idea, and I've been working, so I, I probably had you know a little over six figures in my savings, so I had saved up some money. I started the business, started the company, and originally my vision was if I can make a couple thousand dollars a month extra, you know, in a year, that's 20 grand more. That was a big that, deal. That's almost business to start. Did you know that? That's a side gig. Yeah, that was a big deal. When I was, and I was making like over a little over six figures in my job. So I was like, if I can make $20,000 more, that's a big deal. So my goal was to get three trucks in a year, three trucks. And then my friend was like, you got to think big. Let's go to five trucks. And our first contract was 20 trucks. So it was way over what I expected. So then I'm really working, working, working. And when you grow so fast, so quickly, um, you start really dipping into your expenses. So I haven't gotten paid for months. So my savings started going from 100000 to 80000 to 60000 to 40000 And then at this point, I'm really, you know, did I make the right choice, like leaving my job and, you know, starting a new business? 10000 at that point, you're, you're going down in flames. Like, you're, you know, you're already, you already lost all your money. And then the pandemic hit and my mom was sleeping on the couch. My girlfriend was in our room, like it was a one bedroom apartment. It, it was just chaotic, but I didn't tell anything. And so 
For, Wait, what do you mean? Like, I didn't tell him how, how bad we were going with the money situation. And then it goes to 800 bucks, $400, you know, $30 in my bank account. So at this point, I'm asking all my friends, business people. You did not ask me. I just want to put that on the record. I, I did not ask you. I also did not know you were rich as F. <laughs> But, but no, the reality is that I was just reaching out to people that, that I thought could help out just for like 30 to 60 days until I, I was able to, you know, finish all the payments for the, for the production, the installation and everything that it takes to produce, you know, 40 banners that are 53 foot. So I went down to like a little over $8, like $7 and something in my bank account. And I remember specifically because right down the street from where we lived, there was a a hamburger joint and this is during the pandemic and they had this like bright neon sign that said, you know, lunch special or or lunch combo for $8. And I looked, you know, to my girlfriend and I was like, you know, one day I want to be able to afford taking you there. And it's sad, but you know, that's really how it happened. And I had pulled up together an investor group from Newport. They were going to buy into my business. They were going to actually take ownership of the business. And they were going to basically start paying for all my expenses until uh, I started, you know, becoming profitable. 16 pages of contracts. I signed them. I put them on the table and I went to bed that night and uh, sort of defeated. And I was like, I'm just going to send that tomorrow. And then the very next day I got a paycheck, six-figure paycheck. And then from there on, like, we never looked back. And I used that paycheck to take my girl to the six to the $8 burger. And we have pictures of that. And she, she didn't, like, leave you after that? No, she didn't leave me. I looked like I was, like, you know, homeless. Almost. Pretty, pretty close. But, yeah, that was a really good that was a really good memory. I still have the check, by the way. It's framed in my office. That's cute. What were some of the biggest lessons you learned from that journey? I talk about resilience a lot on my Instagram. Follow Insta Chava. People ask, like, you know, the leadership scales, this and that. And, and listen, you can learn a lot of stuff. Um, from studying, from coaching, from mentors. But, it, but if you can't hold the heat, like, you're, you're going to go down. I, no business just goes without a, you know, without a hinge, without a flaw. Uh, even the big multi-billion dollar businesses. Remember the time where Facebook was, everybody was canceling it because they were saying uh, uh, their new privacy features change and everywhere. So all these businesses that even, have even scaled to the billions, they always go through issues. Um, and I think that leadership counts for a lot. If you're not resilient, if you can't get through all these issues um, with a positive outlook, you always tell me that I'm the most positive person you know. You, I don't know you sure. are. <laughs> you are. I'm never going to forget when I took you to Don Worley's party at MTMP, which we're at MTMP right now. This was Last maybe, year. A, maybe a year ago. And mm-hmm. his parties are always like on a Wednesday at 3 p.m. Yeah. And... Chava, with, without a drink or any drugs or anything, <laughs> is walking around Don's party. Oh, my God. Maria, we're so lucky. This is the best thing ever. Like, look at this. It's a Wednesday. Look at this. It's a Wednesday at 3 p.m. And look. It, look. Look how, how lucky And I was riding the bull. And the funny thing is, like, I actually live in Las Vegas. Like, that was normal to me. Like, you know, we're at the Omnia, which I've been there. but And I was annoyed. I was like, okay, it's not that great. Like, get over it. And, yeah, you are definitely... Uh, very and you're very friendly. Like I, I, I can't walk into a store or a restaurant or anywhere without Chava learning the cashier's name, striking up a conversation with them. And I'm like the least friendly person in those situations. I heard you on the phone with a. <laughs> Let's not go there. But listen, I. To answer the question, is resilience? It's just it, you have to have that kind of skill and that kind of fortitude, um, and also humility. I'm always learning. I, I, I don't know it all. That's for sure. The one thing I do no, know is don't. that. So, <laughs> Okay, let's get into the good stuff. Yeah, though, yeah. Okay. So on your website, you say InMotion is a data company who puts brands on trucks. Mm-hmm. What does that mean? How are you a data company? So we started placing billboards on the trucks. That was the original idea. We also have a beacon that tracks everything for the truck. So that's, that's how we're able to see where the trucks What's are. What's a beacon? A beacon technology is, is almost like... A, um, like a like a geo uh, like a geofence like a GPS that's attached to the truck, and it's gathering data. It's collecting data, yeah. What all the kind time. of data? Uh, all kinds, everything. So I know. Um, so I'll explain how it goes. So the trucks are driving around a certain area. There's people with their trusted devices. Our trucks capture the mobile IDs of the device. The mobile ID is basically. Uh, a unique ID that's attached to your cell phone. And so we're able to tell patterns about your life. So 
um, education, race, gender, age group, uh, income level, uh, whether you like coffee, whether you're a pet owner, whether you're a mother, and it's all based on data that you freely provide to the apps on your device and on your phone that if you were to read the fine print and all those apps, uh, it says, hey, we will be selling your data to marketing and advertising. However, I, because this is very important, we can't, uh, we can't obtain anything that's personally identifiable to you. So I just have a user ID of a profile, like you're, we're not going to say how old I am, you're this age, Correct. you're a mother, you like coffee, you hate dogs, Correct. like so that. I'll give a specific example, and I'll use myself, and I don't mind aging, you know, 27 years old, it's not bad. <laughs> yeah, and we've known each other forever, so that For 20, works. 20, somehow. Works. So anyway, so... I grab my phone and if I have, you know, the MLB, you know, ESPN app, it'll say, okay, this person is a sports enthusiast. And, you know, or if I have Priceland, Hotels.com, you know, this person is likely to travel or business-minded. But how does this impact, mm -hmm. let's say, a personal injury firm that's doing advertising with you? Our trucks, we, since we have the mobile IDs for the devices, we're also able to tell who is worth, you know, a million dollars or more. So potentially they have a bigger policy. Also... We are able to tell whether they've been in a body shop or a physical therapy or in a hospital. So if you've been in a body shop or a physical therapy, you perhaps were injured. So before they even search for a lawyer, we're able to match those who have seen your truck, your advertising, with those people who have been in a body shop. And when you do that, you can send them a, you know, a message on their Instagram, LinkedIn, 3,000 different applications that we have access to. And so someone is scrolling through their feed and then they see you know, an advertising and they're like, oh yeah. I've seen those trucks, but they don't know that we know that right. they were exposed to those. And that's really when, when you marry the real world with the digital world, like conversion skyrockets. That's really what sort of separate, separates us. Because regular billboards, you, you can't do that. No, I mean, and, and, and you can't tell who actually saw your truck. So the way regular billboards work is based on traffic data. So, so they would go, you know, these are how many tr cars drove by in 2021, sense. you know, 5,000 cars per week. But you don't know that, right? How many seconds does somebody have to be near the truck with an eyesight of the truck for you to consider them having seen the truck? So we actually have a system that was done by a third party uh, study from a company. Eight seconds is what we want. It uh, really should be seven, but we only capture everybody that's been for eight seconds. So if in eight seconds you, you haven't been able to read the entire advertising ad, you probably you know, did too much. So if anybody is there for only three, four seconds, we don't count them. So I want to make sure that everybody that we know is 100% 100% verified that they've seen the truck. Now, of course... Unless they were driving or walking with their eyes closed, you know, th there's certain things that I can't really, but I know that for a fact they were there when the truck was there, that they were within the visibility icon of the truck for about eight seconds. The second question that we get asked all the time is like, how far can they see these trucks? That depends on the size of the truck. The, the 53 foot truck, you can see it from, you know, further away. The 26 foot truck, um, we have about 150 foot radius. It, it depends if you're looking from the side or the back, but... 150 feet, that's really what we, that's the average of what we do. And what are the benefits of going with a mobile billboard, which is what I would call it, mm -hmm. for, and I don't know if, you, if that's what you call it, but versus an actual billboard? Number one, we're very, very much less expensive than a traditional billboard. So if, if budget is a concern, that's one thing. Number two. But is that only for major markets or it doesn't matter where you go in the country you're typically going to be cheaper than a billboard because i feel mm -hmm. like a billboard in la compared to Correct. a billboard in the middle of nowhere no offense to anyone is like two completely different things true so our price is the same it doesn't matter if you're in new york or in chicago or des moines or iowa like doesn't matter where you are um true the billboards in the different cities are going to be at a different pricing uh also, if you're trying to really expand and grow, you want to be in the bigger markets. That's typically where it is. Here in Las Vegas, it's highly competitive for the personal injury lawyers. They are advertising on regular billboards a lot more than actual casinos, than the Bellagio, than the Wynn, than the big corporate casinos. And so if you're a new lawyer and you're coming in, you can't compete with those guys because they already have those billboards prepaid and then they have you know the 30-day clause that they can 
renegotiate their deal and re you know renegotiate their deal for another six months, three months, whatever it is. And so our billboards, our mobile billboards, allows these new up and coming law firms to penetrate the market where other areas, you know, where other billboards are not. So less expensive, we're able to penetrate if it's uh, a pricing issue. We also don't fold traditionally as a regular mobile billboard. I know you just mentioned that. A mobile billboard is, is, is a billboard that is designed purposely and pr primarily for advertising. And those have very complete set of restrictions. The drivers can only drive about eight hours a day. Um, they, they can't come near, let's say, schools, hospitals, which is important for personal injury. But for us, the primary purpose of our trucks, it's delivery. They're actually delivering goods and, goods and products to the consumer. But the consumer who's seeing that does not know that. So some of our trucks, you know, have corn or vegetables or TVs or couches or or they deliver bread and popcorn to the hotels or different areas. But I don't think stores. anybody thinks, or and maybe I'm wrong here, but I understand if it's branded as water, right, or mm -hmm. Coca Cola. But I think if somebody sees a truck and it's branded mm -hmm. with Coca Cola, people okay. assume that. It's Coca-Cola inside the truck. Correct. But if somebody sees a truck and it has a lawyer advertising, most people are going to know that that's just an advertisement. Uh, I hope they assume yeah, but, <laughs> that, uh, that, that that law firm is not be, inside the truck. <laughs> <laughs> no, but what, what I'm saying about the being different from a mobile billboard is that those trucks, if you're a regular mobile billboard, that means your primary purpose is to advertise. And so you can't go to areas that are prohibited. Like uh, like, gated communities? Like schools, gated communities, hospitals, any other areas that are outside the route for their advertising. So our trucks, because they they predominantly are delivering, they can go to different areas. So now imagine you're in a, in a Fufu neighborhood and now you have this truck that has your advertising and you're competing against nobody. And not only are you are competing against nobody, you're also grabbing the mobile IDs of anybody that you know walks outside and sees your truck. So we have a lot of pictures from, from the law firms that we have that they love when their trucks are like right in front and center of you know these gated communities. But like I said, also hospitals, institutions, a lot of our trucks do deliveries to Whole Foods, Trader Joe's, and all these areas where people are always there, but you can't have a, a traditional billboard there. That's amazing. And yeah. now I will say that Chava and I have a mutual client, mm -hmm. and I know that this works very well. Now, I want to ask a few questions. Thank you. You're welcome. Let's talk about measuring performance. Mm -hmm. Like, how do you measure the campaign's performance, and what kind of ROI can a client expect? Even though PI is not our biggest segment, because we do have other segments, we are growing in the PI law firm because we've been able to be very successful with the results that we're given. <clears throat> now, these guys... They don't really give a shit <laughs> about impressions. They don't care about, you know, uh, how many people saw it. They don't care about the race, gender, anything. They just say like, hey, how many times is my phone going to ring? <laughs> All right, how many, how many calls am I going to get as a result of having these trucks? And so in order for us to determine the response to that, we need to know what they are doing for cases every month. So this is very similar to what we do Correct. when it comes to SEO. And I, I argue the same thing when the client is like, when we're talking about rankings, I'm like, look, even if you're ranking, if you're not getting phone calls, mm -hmm. you're not signing up cases, you're not going to care about the rankings. It's, it's, it's a holistic approach. And okay. it sounds like this is also a holistic approach because it's not as simple as they saw the billboard. It's like now we're going to go and we're going to retarget them. Yes. If they want to do the services, our PI firms, they all do both services. So and one part also, of the, yeah. Can you also retarget without them having to have met a certain criteria? For example, ER or physical therapy, can you just say, we want to basically have a digital commercial or a digital billboard. So since we know you saw us in the real world, now we're gonna also show you our brand in the digital world. Can you do that? And like on you your phone? That? Yeah, just a, you a, a very broad retargeting. So you saw our billboard three times, now we're gonna retarget you on social media without waiting for you to be in an ER. So we collect everybody and we have what it's called a frequency rate. So we know how many times people have seen it. Anything above, anything under three, I honestly don't even retarget. Because if they've only seen your truck advertising once or twice and I'm spending ad dollars on, you know, on the advertising, 
it's not gonna convert. Like I could do it and make a little bit extra money, but I tell them we just have to wait until they've seen it three times at the very least. Now, the more trucks they have, it, the easier and the faster we're gonna get to that 3x market. You know, you can't get to 3x with with five trucks in in the city of Los Angeles with you know. So is the goal to get to 3x? That's at the minimum. I would assume that the longer a firm has done this, mm -hmm. the better they're going to convert. I would also assume that the more trucks they're doing, the higher the return investment or one thing that PI firms measure is cost per case. So I assume the cost per case goes down because the conversion goes up. And it's it's what we always talk about. It's just, it's branding, right? And what you're doing is it's a branded play. And you have to be very patient when it comes to branding. And I would mm -hmm. argue even more so than with SEO because when it comes to SEO, that's direct intent. Someone's actually searching for them in that moment. But what, what you're doing is a, it's branded. It's a It's a branded play, just like commercials. We're branding and, and we're putting ourselves in the digital world in front of people before they even search for a lawyer. We know that they've been in a situation that most likely requires a lawyer. And from what I've learned in this space, a lot of people are afraid to call lawyers. They think it's going to be too costly. They don't know them. They don't know people. And they've heard negative things. And so, Not the foo-foo people. <laughs> yeah, the foo-foo people know two or three lawyers probably in their family. But... But, you know, I was, I was talking to Call Jacob, you know, or Jacob and Ronnie from yeah, Call yeah. Jacob in L.A. And, and I asked him the simple question. I mean, you're the godfather of billboards, you know, Mr. and Ronnie. Like, how, why did you start? Like, how did you start being into practice? And he said, we really want to be there for people who don't have the means, who don't have like two or three lawyers in their families. That's why we put billboards out so that people who are not readily available to reach out to a lawyer can find us. And so I, I learned from every time, every time I go to a conference with you and I meet more and more lawyers, I ask them, you know, how can we be improved? So going back to the question about measuring, we asked them basically, what was your, your cases last month or not last year for that particular month? And then what was the average for the last three years? So we actually see how much they've been growing on, them, on their own before we came in. And then, and then we start our retargeting campaign, our trucks, and then we see, you know, an increase. And we try to set a base and to be easy with numbers. If they're closing 100 cases a month and I, I tell them, you know, if we close 110, we've already grown your business 10% in just one month. If we close 120, we've grown at 20%. What we've seen is that sometimes we've gone from 100 to 180. And it's an incredible, like, they're like, we gain 80% cases, you know, year over year from the previous year or even as a, as a three-year average. And, and so that's what we're trying to measure. So every law firm is different. Not every law firm closes 100 cases a month. I would argue most don't. <laughs> so, so let's make it simpler. 10 yeah. to 15, that's a 50% increase. So if they're doing 10, to 10 and then we're able to just get you three more cases, that's, that's 30%. Now, what's the minimum time requirement? Now we're getting to the goodies. So we... Um, We require at least six months. Like that's we're, really low, dude. We're just a. I, in my opinion, I think that's really, really low. I would not do anything under a year. Yeah. It's just the problem is so many PI lawyers are so impatient. It's like we're and <laughs> Gary Sarner and I talked about this, and he does radio, and it's like you have to be patient because again, you're building a brand. Like Coca Cola didn't become Coca Cola in a day, and they still brand nonstop. Like I am so sick of seen coca-cola i'm trying not to drink coca-cola <laughs> you, you know what i mean though yeah like i know what you mean if they already have their numbers and let's say we're starting a campaign in january of 2023 they already know what they did january 2022 21 19 and so if we come in in january 2023 and we already show an increase they already know it's already working and so at the very least i want them to do six months now the first month or two We're not doing anything on the retargeting because those first days, first weeks, first two months, we're collecting all these mobile IDs so that we can get to that 3x that frequency so that on month three, now we start retargeting people. That makes sense. So anyone that says, oh, we want to do three months, I was like, you, you may not even get to three months, I mean, to, to the 3x frequency in the first three months. So six months is the minimum. Most, case, most people do 12 months with us. All of our law firms, they've always re-signed with us. So But it's, wait, you haven't told us the most, the what most everyone's what? wondering right now. The what is the cost? What is <laughs> the cost is very, very uh, inexpensive and very transparent. It's on our website. So we have three products, three different prices. 
The semi, the 53-foot billboard, it's $5,000 per month. The 26-foot truck is $3,500. And the LED truck, which are, those are predominantly for conferences or three-day festivals or anything like that. And you've Th those done a lot for of those, two, right? For $2,000, yeah. But uh, honestly, those are more like power plays. Like if you're trying to hit 20,000 people outside of, you know, the Lakers game or outside, you know, That's a really specific cool, conference, though. you can have those. So if, if we wanted to have here for MTMP I in know, Las Vegas, we can get, we can, you could put law rank outside and you'll grab all the IDs from everybody. I we can do it for do T for the next conference. I told, I actually told Mariano and he's like, Mariano. <laughs> I'll, I'll, no, I'll give you, Mariano. I'll give you, I'll give you, I'll give you guys a good deal. <laughs> I, I would hope so. But so and 12 how, months. And what's, okay. So six month minimum, you said the pricing depends on the size, five, thirty five, two. Is that right? Or twenty five? Yes. But to clarify, how it's five thousand a month, thirty five hundred a month, and two thousand daily for the LEDs. Oh, the LEDs. Two thousand daily, okay, got it. Correct. So what's the minimum amount of trucks that you would recommend? Uh, the very minimum is ten trucks. So if you if you really wanna come in here and you wanna do um, a really pushy, uh, really being able to penetrate a market where the big players are in. Some of the big players are, you know, dropping a, a hundred, one hundred fifty thousand, two hundred thousand dollars a month in advertising and billboards and TV. So it's really hard for you to compete against them. So in order for you to do something disruptive and different, you can have ten trucks at the thirty-five hundred dollar price, and that's thirty-five thousand dollars a month for ten trucks in your market. Um, that's that's what I would recommend on the starting point. Anything below that, like if you do five, which we've never done, by the way, we offer that. It, it, it's just going to take too long. It'll it'll take too long for you to get to that frequency. And then you're going to start being like, hey, it's four months. You, you, we, really, we really don't see the results. So we don't want to shoot ourselves in the foot. If you come out with 20, you'll right away in month one, you'll see the difference. It will be categorical. You will see a big difference in the number of cases you're closing with 20 trucks in, in, in one month. So that's awesome. <laughs> okay. Well, now I want to get into something a little bit more Wait. personal. I, I want to go back to the positivity. Okay. And if you could just quickly maybe tell us a little bit about your childhood or young adult life and how did you get to be so positive? You've actually never shared this stuff with me. My but young I, adult I, life. I, I know you've, you've, had, you've had some adversity, right? Yeah, I think everybody does. I mean, to a certain point. I mean, I don't know if like being born in Mexico is an adversity. I, I guess maybe it's I don't. Totally a freaking adversity. <laughs> That's why I took my kids there. I moved to the U.S. when I was 16. I learned English watching Seinfeld, so that was my my favorite TV show. That explains so much. Uh -huh. So that what that I'm funny. I, I did not say that. <laughs> <laughs> Although I do have to say that. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Remember? No one has made me laugh more than Chava in the past 10 days. In the conferences. No one. So anyway, so moved here 16. I went to college in USD. I think, I think the big thing that happened when things changed, uh, I, I, I have had one experience with a personal injury lawyer. Have I, I don't know if I've shared this already. No. You so not. I've actually been involved with in a personal injury case. I had a window fall on my head from a 10 story building. What? Did, I don't, uh, so are you, are you fucking with me right now? No. This is why I moved like this. No. <laughs> you thought I was just like being the robot? No. So wait, wait. when did it, this happen? It, I know exactly. November 20th, 2013. It's going to be, holy shit, it's going to be nine years. So I was walking down the street uh, by the Staples Center. A window just fell and I crashed over my head. It happened right in front of a Starbucks. People came out of the Starbucks and they're like, holy shit, man, are you okay? Like a window just fell on you and you're bleeding. And I'm looking and there's shattered glass. And I, so when I felt the impact, I thought someone just like dropped a rock. Like I, I didn't think it was a window. Like you don't you don't just walk and say like hey a window Wait, just fell on me. Wait, you're fucking with me right now. That no. actually happened to you? It did. I thought I've talked about this. I We've never talked about this. So this happened, and it happened a day before I was starting a new job. So I had no benefits. I had nothing, and so I've been going for physical therapy for a year and a half, and and I had to leave the job. I had to sell my car because I couldn't turn to the blind spot, and you know I still like hold my head when I look up. <laughs> point is that um, <laughs> later on, Selena and Barnes took the case. No. So Selena and Barnes, you know, are huge. And this is before the separation. Yeah. So then I went with Selena and Barnes and I've heard the jingle. See, no, I, and I know Selena. Advertising wait. works. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. And how much did it settle for? Can you say? I can certainly say. Did it settle or did it go to court? No, we settled. But so, so we sued the, the building, 
the the glass window and the people that were doing the repair i think like three different lawsuits so on november 20th 2016 three years later exactly from the day of the accident i went to climb kilimanjaro yes i, I knew and, that. and and i did this you know as gratitude that i didn't die three years before and you know it takes seven days to get to the top and back and so on thanksgiving day i was literally celebrating being alive as close as i can ever be to you know to god i climbed this mountain and we're doing the, the deposition or um, yes. where I'm with my lawyer. It is called there's the deposition. A, there's a mediator. There's the other lawyer for representing the building. And they're asking me all these questions and, you know, how the injured. And, and you know, I obviously I've been injured from the accident and I've had issues. <laughs> and so, <coughs> so the guy leaves the room and my lawyer is like, dude, get ready, man. You're about to be a millionaire. And then it comes back and drops a picture of me at the top of Kilimanjaro. It was my university. They gave me a flag and they said, you know, we'd be really proud if you do this and, and, and you know, you, you, you climb this mountain. So I took a picture at the top of the mountain holding, you know, but it was University good. of San Diego. And so then it was published and then it was in a magazine and then it was out and I, and I didn't know. And so the guy comes back and, I'm, and it's a picture of me at the top of the mountain. Uh-huh. And, and so, like, yeah, I did and that. so my lawyer was like, "We're gonna need a minute." <laughs> and so he scores out. He's like, "What the?" Fuck? And and I mean, I've never seen. I was like, "What?" He's like, "You climb a fucking mountain," you know. And and I said, "Yeah, but you know, I got help. There were like eight people helping me. It's not like I'm just trudging along. Like there were people helping me. It takes a long time." And <laughs> anyway, so they came back. He's like, "We're taking whatever it was offered." And so I think I was offered. I don't know, less than 150 grand. Oh, okay. And I took that, and then I put it on Bitcoin. <laughs> Did you really? <laughs> yeah. What's it at now? And then I gave $5? the rest to my mom. Uh, no, that that grew like a lot, hundreds of thousands, because it was right at t 2017, so right at the peak I of the market, it blew up. Yeah, but I, I helped the rest of my mom. It, it was a good cause. 